Okay, I reassembled the table saw. I cut uh, these strips to hold in all my slats. Almost had enough slats for the one uh, door. So that's the project now on to uh, making some more slats. Hopefully this will go relatively quickly. As you can see, I um, the slats actually came from this four by four post that I had left over. I had left over several remnants about the same length. Uh, then I cut them into those sections. And of course you get about two slat per piece. And then I feathered or cut each end at an angle just to kind of make it flush as it sits. So I'm gonna to try to blow through this process quickly. I'm, I'm, I'm close, I'm uh, looking forward. I can see the, the, end, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm looking forward to getting this thing done and uh, taking a breather. So on to the next step. All right, on to sanding. Um, got the profile right for all of these. I have a whole bunch of them to do. I'm um, just gonna try to make sure, I, I can see some saw marks on there. It's not gonna be perfect, right? And it is gonna be uh, only partially viewed, but want at least to soften the edges here. So I'm gonna roll with 80 on the top and on the bottom, and then um, 120 just to soften this edge. Okay, inserted all the slats and then actually trimmed up um, some border here to hide everything, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the other side, which I will capture on film. But yeah, just 45s, rip down some tiger wood to make it fit and really finished it off nicely. So I'm gonna flip it on the other side. I'm curious when I do, how much this trim is gonna raise up. I I'd prefer it not to sit proud of the frame or sit out beyond it. I'd like it to be recessed. So I'm gonna make sure that is the case. And if it isn't, I, I may change it. Um, and then of course I'll do some kind of molding down here. I don't know if it's quarter round uh, or what. I have a nice piece of rosewood uh, that I've been sitting on for like three years. And I may just trim that up and that, that will be great outside too. It's a, you know very much a uh, hardwood. So anyway, uh, I'll get to trimming up the boards for the molding on the other side of the door. Okay, I'm going to uh, start off by making some of this trim for the other side of that window frame. And you can see I've rounded this off with a um, router bit. Now, what I'm gonna do ultimately is I'm gonna take this big piece of trim or big piece of uh, three quarter inch tiger wood. I'm gonna cut that down the middle and I'm gonna make it just this width, but it's gonna be thick. It's gonna be the three quarters of an inch. Uh, and then I'm going to route both sides, top and bottom, and then I'll rip it on the table saw. You, you want to be careful, obviously, when you're using a router, um, a real small, thin piece of wood. Two potential problems, it might bounce a lot and you might lose control of it. And number two is, you know, that router bit has a ball bearing or a bearing that sits up on top that rides along the top of the wood. And if it's really narrow, it might be sitting up on, off the top. It might not make good contact. So that's just a, a best practice, I think. Anyway, I'll get to it.
All right, so soften the edge here of these boards, as you can see, both the top and the bottom. Now I'm just gonna take them on the table saw, rip them down the middle. We're very close to that, creating four pieces of uh, trim molding for the other side of that door. Going to use a cove bit for the rosewood uh, for the bottom, bottom panel. And uh, found this interesting. Here's that piece of rosewood. So I told you I've been sitting on it for a while. Probably like five years. Look at $14 for this. That is shocking. That, that really, that's a time stamp there. That's the Peely that I bought for this project, which is the, just the frames of each door. That was like 180 bucks, which was ridiculous. But um, fortunately I've been able to use a lot of the, the old wood that I've had and this is just unbelievable. Good old memories of the past. Getting ready to glue this up. There's gonna be just two screws in this entire door. Um, I'm gonna pop one in right here and one on the other side. Uh, the other joints, as you know, are all mortise and tenon, so no real need for any you know, fasteners. Um, what I'm gonna do is just drill a hole here. I got a 3 8 inch bit. This is from a Craig tool, and I have a stopper on here to ensure I don't go too deep. Naturally, we don't wanna drill in too deep. Um, it's gonna give me enough room there to countersink it and put a plug in where you won't see it. And uh, here we go. going to glue this up. Um, excited for this step because it means we're, we're getting closer to the finish. I'm um, going to just put glue in the mortise and all in the tenon. I'm uh, going to use ample amount of glue. I want to make sure that it has plenty good contact. Uh, going to skip out the areas that I uh, carved out for that panel. I want that to float. I want it to be able to move if it needs to move. So I don't want to lock that down with any glue. Um, Anyway, we'll do that. I'll clamp it up and I'm going to kick this into uh, fast forward motion here. This is the start of day five here on the shower door project. Uh, I thought I would be done it in three days, uh, but it's typical of any project. I'm a terrible estimator when it comes to time. I get carried away. I like to add extra intricacies, et cetera, uh, which is fun, whatever. I'll be done today and I'll be happy with that. Um, picking back up on where we left off yesterday, we were talking about making some cove molding for the bottom panel on that door. And I did not take my own advice, right? So I had cut out a square for the dimensions ultimately of this trim molding that I wanted. Then I ran it through the router and as predicted, it turned out like crap, right? So you can see I ran it through multiple times. Maybe you can or cannot see, but it's just not smooth. It doesn't look good. Um, so lesson here, don't do it. Don't do that, right? What we wanna do is take a bigger piece of rosewood like this and you can see I routed out now all of my edges, top, bottom, and what I'm gonna do, this, this ran nice and smooth, it was easy, there's no bouncing, I ran it through twice, it looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take it to the table saw, I'm gonna cut here and then here, and then I'm gonna take the table saw and rip this, split this in half. So ultimately I'm gonna get four pieces of molding out of this, I think I'm gonna need eight, so I'll repeat that process again, but uh, this is the next step, I'll take you out of the table saw, Click it on high speed and we'll we'll cut this to shape. All 
So I've made plenty of cove molding. Not all of it is 100% uniform, which bothers me a bit. But uh, between, I think I have, I don't know, 12 to 16 pieces. I only need eight, so I can pick up some good ones. Uh, so I have plenty there. Here's the stock for the top trim to go over the slats. And I'm gonna cut out just one section uh, for the bottom panel. I just wanna see what it's gonna look like. And then from there, I'm gonna start gluing uh, and assembling the door permanently and uh, coming down the home stretch. All right, gonna be fastening in this uh, little runner to hold all my slats. I've already done it on the one door. So I just wanna make sure that, um, you know, this next one's gonna be in the same exact fashion. I wanna make sure the slats start at the same point up at the top and finish at the start, same point at the bottom. Um, it was really pretty easy, so I'll just kind of walk you through that. Uh, as far as just figuring out the height, all I did was, I'm just using my, my square and aligning you know, the ruler up with the edge of this um, rail that I've made, and it looks like it's about one and an eighth of an inch. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Just come over, put it in the same spot. We're looking for about one and an eighth and it's pretty darn close not perfect just up a touch down a smidge right about there is probably right fingers aren't quite working yet this morning that's good one and an eighth so i'm just going to go ahead and make a quick mark here on this rail and then on the side of my piece, make sure that that aligns. And then I'll just make sure that it's the same exact measurement on the other side. Uh, once I get that in place, I will uh, glue this down, hit it with a couple pin nails just to hold it in place, then come back with a couple screws, get that in place, and uh, I'll, we'll, we'll pick up there. Okay, time to fasten this down now. So I just extended my line uh, outside the the border here just to make sure I uh, can can still see it so I used my square just to make sure it was a an accurate transfer um, and here we are right so I'll take this off for a second hit it up with a quick layer of grip glue don't need a ton try to keep it in the middle if you can that wasn't the best Up or down, give it a little slide back and forth. And we want to make sure it's centered naturally. Um, I'm going to eyeball it initially. And I'm actually just going to eyeball it, pin one in. And these are just little baby pins, so um, I can maneuver it around a little if needed. So just to quit it stop it from sliding back and forth so much that's good all right that's pretty good um let's see it. rag here wipe this down real quick just don't want to get glue all over my square set up my square where the depth here is uh you know from the side of this piece it's going to be right to the middle so we're close but not perfect Right where my pin is, I'll push a little bit. That's pretty good. And same thing down here. We're gonna get this in place. Pretty good. I'll try to hold it there. If I can. Right there's where we want it. If you don't have a pin nailer, man, these things are awesome. Um, Really good for delicate, fine work. Uh, not typically going to split anything with these little pin nails. Just a great tool. Um, so yeah, we'll double check our lines here. Looks pretty good to me. Pretty good, pretty good. All right. So I'll drive one more in here, and then ultimately, we're going to come back with some screws in a sec just to fasten it. And we want to make sure that this could split pretty darn easily with screws. That's the last thing I want to do. So we'll do a couple pilot holes as well. Anyway, 
Set this up. Same steps. Make sure that this is lined up properly. Get one in up top. It's pretty good. Check down the bottom. Right there is where we want it. Should be pretty good. Yep. Pretty solid. All right, now, uh, what we're going to do here is just drive in those screws. I have some screws left over from the shower. So these are little stainless steel, small head, like trim screws. And I have my bit. My bit actually is going to be just as big as the barrel on this screw. Um, the head of the screw obviously is bigger. But I'm going to just start a pilot hole going through my initial, uh, this little rail that I've made. Just down to the frame, right? So I'm gonna do a few of these. Good. Good. And then we're gonna pop that out. We're gonna throw in this little tiny drill bit, which is smaller than the barrel on that screw. So it will bite. I'm gonna just put it about at the length of the screw. That's fine. I wanna make sure I don't go through and through the frame. And then and drill. Good. Take that out. Change my bits. And now this is the obviously important part as we come down. Wanna make sure we do not ever tighten. That's pretty good. I just want the head of it exposed. You see the wood start to dent just a little bit. That's what we want. Good. Perfect. I'll do the same thing on the other side and then uh, report back. Time to put in the trim molding here uh, for this, which will really help finish it off. I'm gonna put the trim molding on one side and then I'll put, when I flip it, I'll put the slats in and then the trim molding on the other side. Uh, just a little bead of glue around the perimeter here. I uh, don't wanna get any in the slats actually where they're gonna sit. So I'll try just to keep it confined here. Good. You can see I've already cut my trim. So I'm just going to start piecing this in. This piece is a little bent, so I hope I can pin it back in the right position. We'll see. pretty good and again we're going to try to put these pins all the way back towards the end I don't want it to be hitting where the those slats are all right that held pretty good and sometimes, you know, when I'm trying to bind something back like that, I actually will fire one pin at an angle and one right at a different angle close to one another, kind of mechanically anchors it down. Um, so that's 
something that's worked kind of well for me. Shit. Scrape it up a little bit. I am gonna sand all this, so it doesn't matter too much, but I will be happy when this thing is done and when I can hang them, which is probably going to be uh, Wednesday. I get some hinges that are coming from Amazon. So hopefully later in the week, this will be hung and ready for uh, shower time. All right, down to the last step here with the trim. So won't be using the saw much more. I have all the top trim in around the uh, slats. And this is the last panel I have to do with the rosewood that I had trimmed with the cove molding. So uh, I'm gonna cut these at 45s and then I'll pin it in and on to the last steps, which will be sanding and routing. And that should be it. I'm excited. All right, this is it. Trimming in the, the cove molding. Gonna glue around the perimeter. Already cut it to fit. Pop each piece in, get a little bit of squeeze out. You'll notice I'm trying to pin it into the frame here, not actually into that panel. Again, that's, that's floating, and I want it to be able to move pretty much freely. Yeah, there might be some glue there. For all intents and purposes, it's pretty free. Right, that's it. I'm gonna wipe her down and on to sanding. And the only thing I'm gonna sand, I'm gonna sand the frame. Obviously, there's a couple uh, saw blade marks on it, and this sits a little bit proud, right? So I'm gonna take the sander, get this nice and flush, and um, following that, route the edges, and that'll be it. So one door is completely sanded down. I got the other side of this sanded down, very dusty today. Um, using my mask. Anyway, you can see there's a couple uneven ledges or maybe you can't, but I'm gonna initially hit it with the belt sander and I'm gonna be careful with it because you can definitely mar the wood and create more, more troubles than you need. So I'm gonna just hit the real high spots with it, remove some material quick, then I'm gonna go with the palm sander at 40, then 80, uh, then probably 120 and we're done. Um, and then after that's complete, the la very last thing is going to be to route the edges, just smooth it out. It's uh, really pleased with the way the, the other door turned out. I hope this one turns out as well. There's been a couple gaps, like really minor gaps. I mean, these are outside shower doors. I shouldn't worry about it, but I just I can't help it. So I probably will have a few in here. I'll show you how to seal them up and close it. I don't know how long it will hold because um, I'm not going to finish these doors. They're just going to be all natural out here. So um, I think both Sapele and Tiger Wood, you don't have to do really much with sealing it. Uh, clean it with soap and water and that's, that should be about it. It should last 15 to 20 years. Anyway, going to uh, put it in the fast, fast paced mode here. Start with the, again, the uh, belt sander and then go to the palm. There you go.
finished up with the sanding. Really pleased how it looks. Nice tight corners. You can see where the where the different woods are are combining. It's a nice smooth transition. All the seams are tight. So yeah, real pleased with it. Um, similar to the other one. So on to the last step here, which is going to be just routing the edge. Just a simple little round over bit I'm going to use for the edge, and we're done. So I was getting ready to route, and I realized that I have a couple holes I need to fill. So uh, as you may recall, I put two screws in each door. Um, and as we're routing, this bearing may hit that and then cause you know, a blemish up on top. So I'm gonna cut some plugs, fill these holes real quick, uh, and then come back to I'm routing. Cutting plugs, right? So obviously whatever plug you're gonna cut, you wanna use the same kind of wood. So when you do put it in the hole, it, it you know, looks seamless. Um, this is a plug cutter, three eighths of an inch, and this is how you use it, right? So put it down, you wanna brace it well. Normally I'll use my feet and I'll put a foot here, a foot here, and then push down. Now it's important, there's this little spike here which sits out, protrudes beyond the actual bit, right? So when we use it, you let that just sit. That's kind of like holding everything in place. If you push real hard down to start, it may jump on you, right? So you hold down the bit or the piece well, use your feet preferably, and just start it going. Once you get it cut, you can push hard. That's how you cut a plug. Then we use like a uh, little screwdriver. It should work. And we just pop this in there and break it. There you go. So there's your plug. We'll glue that up, we'll throw it in the hole. Um, it should sit out from the hole, and then we'll, we'll take a saw, cut it down pretty close, sand it down, and you'll still see the hole, but it will be uh, nicely filled. I'm going to put in the plugs now, right? So you can see the plug is cut. It's cut at a slight angle, right? So um, it's easy to slip into the hole, and it widens as you hit it down further, so it will end up stopping at some point. Um, I'm going to put some glue in the holes. And then I have some glue here, and I'm just gonna kind of roll this plug in it. I wanna make sure I get all the sides coated pretty well. That's pretty good. And we're gonna drop her in. Now, one thing you wanna do is try to match up the grain, right? The grain of this wood's running this way. I want the grain of the plug to be matching that. That looks pretty good. Take my hammer. Beat it down. You don't want to hit it too hard just until it's nice and snug. Same thing here with the other one. Get that grain matching up. It's about there. Tap, tap, tap a root. Perfect. So let those cure. I'll actually flip it to the other side. Same process, obviously. I'll let these cure. I'll cut them off tomorrow. Um, sand it flush, then route, and I am done. I'll just be waiting on uh, my other hinges to, to come, which should be here on Wednesday, I think. So shower will be done at that stage. All right, so let these cure overnight. And I'm uh, just going to cut off the top of the plugs here real quick. I'm going to sand them down, route, as I had hoped to do yesterday. Uh, and then I'm going to put the project on hold for a couple days. I have my hinges coming later in the week. I think it's Wednesday. And then I also did some research on different treatments. Now, with this wood, it is my understanding, definitely with the tiger wood, you don't have to do anything. Um, but if you do treat it and you put on an oil finish, it'll keep the colors nice and rich. And, and right now, this is definitely a subdued color. So when you put on the oil, it will really pop. Um, this is some of the wood here's a piece of the wood that i got you know from the lumber yard and this was treated with some kind of oil you can just see it's really rich in color so uh, i put enough time effort and energy into these doors over the last four or five days 
Uh, I certainly will put on some oil and make it pop um, and really bring that shower to life out back. So anyway, that will be um, another day and we'll kind of get into the details when I'm doing that treatment. But for today, again, let's buzz off these plugs and sand it down and, and finish uh, with some routing. So when cutting the plugs, you can use, I'm gonna use this, this multi-tool. Uh, it's, it's good for this application. It's good for a lot of different things. You certainly could use a coping saw or whatever you have handy. Um, one thing that's important certainly is you don't want to dig down too deep, you know, just finish the cut above the surface of the door or whatever material you're working on. When you sand it, it will come down pretty quick with the palm sander. So here we go. And it's down real quick, uh, 40 and then 80. And uh, I got actually got a couple saw marks here. I don't know if you, you can probably see them. I'll get rid of that too. Uh, and I'm gonna do this in the house, just in the, in the basement of the garage. Um, save my neighbors from the noise. It's been like four days of straight noise out there. So they'll probably appreciate it. Anyway, throwing on the vac. You know what i figured uh i'll save you for all this the sound you'll need to see me uh you know go ahead and sand down this entire piece but what i will show you i actually lost where the heck that plug was so maybe you can see it that's just with the 40 right here's the plug so it really blended in tremendously well anyway gonna sand the rest of this and then uh catch you for the routing portion route this in the house too um have a little bit of cleanup but that's that's okay so I'm gonna use a uh, roundover bit here and I got this little mini palm sander. Um, I'm not gonna to try to take too much off in one pass. Uh, biggest thing with these, this little palm sander is you wanna make sure that it sits flat, right? It's really easy for it to tip back. We wanna make sure it stays flush on the, on the surface of the door. Otherwise it's gonna you know, throw things out of, uh, out of skew as far as the rounding. So anyway, here we are. So it's an exciting day. I got my uh, Ipe oil, which arrived uh, from Amazon, and it's a hardwood conditioner. So it's not like a shellac or a polyurethane or anything like that. It's not gonna leave a hard shell on the wood. It actually is just a conditioner. So it's oil that's gonna soak into the wood. You come back, you let it sit 15, 20 minutes, something like that. You wipe it clean. Um, started a little bit with this door here to my right. You can see how it's much darker than the door over to my left. So um, this is an exciting part. I, I love, love seeing the things, uh, you know, come together and finish and get to see the beauty of the wood shine through. So anyway, I'm going to continue here. I'll throw it on time lapse and then, uh, you know, hit you back up when it's all done. Kind of show you what it looks like after I've wiped it down.
Finished wiping them down and very pleased with the way it looks. That oil really makes it pop. Um, see, both doors are looking good, so I can't wait to hang them. I'm gonna let it dry for at least 24 hours. It's gonna be cold this weekend, so I may or may not hang them this weekend, but I do have all the hardware to do so, and I can't wait to see them in place. So I've decided to hang the doors today. I may bring them back in because it's still cold, but at least when I get the hinges set. So here's the doors in context with the shower. I think uh, yeah, everything else needs to be oiled as well. It's so obviously all these beams will come back to life and look you know, similar to the, the tiger wood here in the uh, doors. Um, one thing that I did was, you know, when it came to putting the hinges on here, naturally the, the beams here that I'll be tying them to are not square, you know, it's not 90 degrees. So I needed a solution um, around that. And I found these, which are sweet on Amazon, right? So these are made for like fence posts, they're stainless steel. Um, they weren't inexpensive, but it solves the problem, right? So I'll bolt these onto the doors on each side. They'll actually sit like this with the post down. And then I'll drive these hooks into my post. It doesn't matter if it's square or not. It'll sit like this naturally. And the posts will just slide right into the O-ring. Um, so that should work perfectly. And I even was thinking they'll, they'll really work well in winter time. So if, I, if the shower is not operable, I shut it down for winter, I can simply bring these doors in. No reason to have them sit out here in weather um, unnecessarily. So that's what I'll be working on now. Uh, first step will be to get these um, you know, brackets the, put onto the doors and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I've situated the hinges five and a half inches down off the top and up off the bottom. So it's all uniform. Um, one thing I did have to consider here was just where we're putting in these brackets, right? There's obviously they're big bolts. Um, I wanna make sure that it doesn't interfere with any screws I pit, put in here on this um, rail to hold these slats. So I've confirmed I'm good to go on both sides. And uh, here we go, I'll start putting these in. All right, so I just laid out where the brackets are gonna be on the door. Just wanna make sure they're the proper orientation. Um, I used my square to figure out exactly, you know, where that first hole is going to be off the edge. So that's uniform everywhere. Uh, and then I just naturally marked some pencil lines here. Um, when I'm going to drill these out, I certainly do not want to crack the wood. So I'm going to start with a small bit. Um, then I'm going to follow that up with the proper bit size, which is just a little bit bigger than these screws. And I put a little tape on there just to ensure that I don't go too deep. I don't want to cut into you know, any of the brackets here for the um, slats that I put in. Uh, and then lastly, when I put in these screws, which are, are pretty substantial, um, they're beefy, everything's stainless steel, so I shouldn't have any issue. Um, but lastly, I adjusted uh, the drill so that when I'm putting it in, it's not gonna over tighten. Um, in fact, I'll actually twist it a little bit by hand to complete it, but anyway, uh, on to that. All right, so I've drilled one hole already, gonna drill this second hole. And the purpose for this smaller bit initially is I just don't want the other bit to walk all over the wood. This is a nice small bit, should be pretty easy to start exactly where I want. And it just makes the process a little bit easier. Good. Quickly check this bracket again. Hopefully my holes are dead center. Seem like it, so we're in good shape there. Change the bit. And we're just gonna go down to the tape. Change it a little bit again now to this other a bit to drive these screws in. Put the bracket in place and I got, uh, these screws are, are pretty decent sized heads for it to match up with these holes, but let's be on the safe side. I got a little stainless steel washer as well, I'll add.
good. And hand tight this, hand tighten this just a touch. It's probably pretty solid. Good. Just a touch. All right, there you go. Got all the brackets on, and now I'll try to figure out exactly how to line up these eye hooks with the brackets or the posts outside. So, almost there. All right, the doors are hung. Um, took me a little bit of time. I just was taking my time. Uh, quite honestly, I was a little stressed out about drilling into the four by four posts simply because I knew the span was, you know, 38 inches from side to side, uh, but being diagonal and all, I, I wasn't sure exactly, you know, where these pins needed to sit. So I went a little bit um, left of center over here and right of center out here. So it's on the perimeter, uh, but it gave me good wiggle room to work with. And um, yeah, real pleased with the way it's turned out. So I think next obvious thing to do here is to, <laughs> Now put some oil on the rest of this tiger wood, get a little latch here. I need to put a cross member up top. I um, used that two by four just to make sure things were nice and square, but you know, really pleased with the way it all came out. And I uh, appreciate you following along and, and watching this build. So hopefully uh, I'll have another project soon you can tune into. Thanks.